All right. So, hey, YouTube family, we are live for a Bible study. We're super excited that you guys have decided to join us today. I have the faithful live fam here. And so um, they had about 10 minutes or so to meditate on this scripture which is the basis of today's Bible study. It comes from Job 23 and 10. And I just love the amplified version. It says, but he knows the way that I take and he pays attention to it. When he has tried me, I will come forth as refined gold, pure and luminous. So for the people who are here, if you would like to speak, what does the scripture mean to you? What insight do you gain from it? Um, and also just be kind of concise with your responses as well um, to save time. Well, to me, um, it means that, well, what I got from it is that a lot of things we go through, sometimes I, I, I can get frustrated but uh, I'm reminded that God knows where he's taking me, even if I don't know. And the things that frustrate me are usually things that he uses to refine my character so that when I get to wherever he's taking me, I can handle it. That's a good test. What I heard was frustration leads to refinement. The things that frustrate you are what the Lord, very things the Lord will use to refine you. That's really good test. Um, Anybody else wants to chime in? Yeah, I actually feel like when I read it, um, and forgive me, so I actually had to, I pulled it up in the KJV version because sometimes like reading between the versions, I could be a little bit slow. Like, you, does that make sense? Like sometimes other versions just make more sense to me than other versions. Yeah, no, that's um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, when it says, but he knoweth the way that I take, so basically that just, or for me in the place that I'm at in life right now, it just really made me think of like God not imposing upon our free will. Like we have free will, right? And so we have these paths and these different choices to take. And so it's like, God knows the beginning from the end. So he already know, knows what choices I'm going to make. He knows the path that I've chosen to take. And obviously it was since we're even talking about scripture, then he knows it's with him, whether it's necessarily right or wrong, but God knows the way that I've taken, but through that path, God is going to work it out. And when it says, when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold right after that. Basically, I feel like the Lord is saying that no matter what path we decide to take, he's going to utilize whatever comes our way to test us, to make us like, like unto gold, you know, and to make us better. Amen. I love that. Complete and concise. Thank you so much, Renaja. And then um, do I have anybody else that would like to speak? We'll take like two more responses. Don't make me start picking people. Y'all know I used to be a teacher. I'll start picking people. So I would love to share, but I feel like um, the first two um, sisters already just like hit the nail on the head for me. They took the words right out of my mouth. But um, I feel the same way, especially like what Renaja just said, like um, we're given free will. So within the choices that we take or the path that we take, God already knows before we even do it. And with that choice that we choose to take, he's going to you know, use this to help build your character, help to strengthen you, help to uh, refine you pretty much. Amen. Thank you so much, Linnell. Can I have one more person? I know they like took it up, but okay. So I'm just going to uh, read Yanara's. Yanara said, gold has no value until it goes through the fire. So are we. That is good. That is good. Because what Yanara is saying is that we are valuable once we go through the fire. Before that, you might get a dollar, but after that, you might get a couple billion dollars, you know? And so I really like that. And I like all of your responses. So thank you guys for participating. And so that brings me to some of the um, insights that I received from the scripture meditation, right? So it says, but he knows the ways that I take and he pays attention to it. So instantly I'm like, okay, God observes our actions and ways. 
So just like Satan observes different patterns and habits that we have, and he creates demonic clocks and timetables, right? The Lord also pays attention more so than the enemy to our actions and ways. And so when I read it, it meant, well, okay, if it's saying that he knows my ways, but he's putting me in a fire to test me, he knows my ways. So is me going through the fire really to reveal my heart to him or in actuality, it's almost a double entendre, right? Where he's really doing it to reveal my heart to me. And so that was the second point I had here is that he tests us to reveal our own heart to us. And the testing not only reveals what's in our hearts, but through the revelation, which is almost what um, Tess said, through the revelation, there's a frustration, right? Because you begin to notice what the Lord shows you. You're like, wow, I thought I was good, but now I'm seeing all of these areas that I need to work on. And what he reveals is what you end up refining, amen? And so um, the other point is that when it says, you will come forth as refined gold, pure and luminous. We emerge from the fire, pure and undefiled. You know, it's not easy going through the fire of God. It is not. But when you come out, you are pure and undefiled. And what it is that he took out of you, you don't miss it because you end up becoming a better version of yourself. And so the last one is, though the trial may be rough, there is much fruit produced from it. It reminds me of the scripture where it says that at the time of discipline and correction, it is not pleasing. I remember when I was a kid, you know, getting disciplined for certain things. But when you see what that discipline, like when you adhere to God's discipline and his correctiveness and him chastising you, you realize that there is a fruit of righteousness. There is great fruit that comes from it. All right. And so these are the ideas not ideas, but I guess revelations that I got from the scripture when I read it. And so that brings me to today's Bible study topic. It's called test. When the Lord has tested me, I shall come forth as pure gold. And obviously you guys get the color scheme and you see the fire. So we're going to be talking about entering into the fire of God. And so I thought we always have to begin with some definitions, okay? And so let's first define the word test. So when I looked in the online dictionary, it said it's a procedure intended to establish the quality, performance, or reliability of something, especially before it is taken into widespread use. So in the on the online definition, where it says, especially before it is taken into widespread use, that really spoke to me. Because um, if I could be quite honest, you know, it's so easy for people to just get online and say things. And there's a difference when people have gone through a process, you notice a difference. And so the, the whole thing is, is like when you're working in a factory, before they release products, they have to undergo quality control testing. If we aren't careful, we will bypass the quality control testing going through the fire and now whatever is impure in us is released into whoever we speak to is released into whatever it is um that like whatever platform whatever person we're speaking to right and so i said testing this term is the efficacy whether negatively or positively right because a person could really have gone through the testing and did well right and they're impacting people in a positive way. But then we have some people where it doesn't take you much. You hear a few words that they speak about thus says the Lord, and this is not to offend anybody, but this is true. You can hear a lot of hurt and pain, and you can say that they're speaking through something that still hasn't been purified yet. Amen. And so that's why we also have to be, be, um, be aware of what we're listening to and what we're taking in because sometimes other people's impurities, like just because someone says something doesn't mean that they were tested by the Lord. It doesn't mean that they went through a certain process to even be speaking at that time, amen? And so KJV Dictionary, to compare with the standard, to try to prove the truth or genuineness of anything by experiment or by some fixed principle or standard. So pretty much testing determines, do you measure up? Are you qualified? And so um, let's go to the next one. 
So the one thing when I was uh, going through this, the Holy Spirit reminded me that testing requires conditions. All right. So whenever we speak of testing, we must mention the environmental conditions because the conditions are related to the desired results, right? So for example, when you are in school and your teacher tests you, he or she tests you to determine just how much of the lecture material did you comprehend, all right? And then some of you guys on here or people on the replay, you test people to see if they are worthy of your time, amen? Um, I know I used to have this really bad where I would just be testing people and it was to see if they were worthy of my time. So I would put certain conditions together. I would react certain ways just to see what they would do, right? So testing requires conditions. And so the thing about testing is if you have improper testing conditions, it yields inconclusive results, right? So um Testing requires the perfect conditions, not just any conditions, but it must be the perfect conditions. And so to create the perfect condition for your subject, you must study who you are, who you want to test, all right? And so when we look at scripture, it says, the Lord knows the way that I take. He pays attention. It says, God is observing you, all right? So God sees what you do when someone speeds past you in traffic. God sees what you do when um, you're down to your last dollar. And it's like, okay, what I, I know what she's going to do because I've been observing her, right? And so he creates the perfect condition to see, okay, well, I gave her some knowledge last week. So let's see if she applies it in this situation, right? So he studies you, but we also know there's an enemy that studies us as well. And so when you're creating a, a, a certain testing condition, you must know the result and purpose. Like, what's the point of you testing this person? Like I just said, a teacher, their purpose is for them to see, do you really know the material, right? And then the other part is um, you have to, if you are testing someone, you gotta know, okay, well, if, if they do this, they pass. If they do this, they fail. Right. So it's very basic, but it's just going over, like trying to get you guys to understand that there is a condition that's required when it comes to testing, especially in the kingdom of God. And so the next thing testing reveals. So Joseph understood this principle of God. I call it a principle because it's a truth throughout scripture. We see why the Lord tests us. Right. And so Joseph understood that if I test something or someone, it reveals their true intent and hidden motives. So when Joseph was brought back into uh, the presence of his brothers, it wasn't a, hey, y'all, right? He tested them. And so it says, um, I don't know which scripture this is. I think this is uh, Genesis 44 and 17. It's not written on here, but it's in Genesis 44. It says, but Joseph said, Far be it from me to do such a thing. Only the man who has found to have the cup will become my slave. The rest of you go back to your father in peace. So if you guys aren't aware of this story, pretty much what happened here, we know that Joseph was the youngest brother at the time and his brothers sold him into slavery, right? And so the test that the, the testing conditions, the area that he was creating the environment was he's like, well, I'm going to take the cup of divination and I'm going to put it in the youngest person's sack, right? So he chased after them and he's like, you guys are evil. You stole blah, blah, blah. When in actuality, he planted it. So sometimes the Lord will plant certain things in your life just to test you. Amen. It's not saying that you did it or certain things are going on. It's a test. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Sit, sit, sit. I'm sorry, you guys. There's somebody outside. Sit down. Sit. What I say? Thank you. All right. And so, um, yeah. So he put the cup in the youngest brother's bag, right? And so sometimes the Lord will put you in certain conditions and it'll just be him testing you, right? And so in this situation, what he was trying to do was if he's saying whoever 
this cup is found and becomes my slave. He's like, okay, I want to know that they learn their lesson from putting me, the youngest brother, in slavery. And so we saw that Judah interceded for him, for Benjamin. He was like, man, yo, you can't do this. Take me instead. So he was able to see his brother's hearts had shifted and changed. And so this is what led to him saying like, okay, hey, I'm your brother. Like, you know, blah, blah, blah. I forgive you. I understand that what, what happened was because for the Lord to send me ahead of you, et cetera, et cetera. Prayerfully, that makes sense. And so this brings us to the next thing. Well, why does God test us? So I believe that no matter what testing you're in, this always has it as its observation focus. So I'm going to explain what observation focus is. Pretty much what that is, it's like, okay, if you are a scientist or if you are a researcher, you're creating certain conditions, your observation focus is like what you're going to see a lot of different things, but what are you really focused on seeing, right? And so I believe that every testing that the Lord puts us through is always to check our heart posture. There may be other things that he does, but the main thing is that he does it to check our heart posture. And so another thing that he tests us for is to build our endurance in the faith, all right? And um, to receive God's approval to test our faithfulness. How faithful to God are you? Are you faithful to God as far as, or as much as he places, his hand is open towards you? Are you faithful to God when his hand closes? Amen. And so also he tests us to reveal our level of obedience because some people are obedient with what they want to do. But if you're only doing what you want to do and not all that God requires you to do, you aren't obedient, you're disobedient, amen? And so another reason God tests us is to promote us, all right? So next, we're gonna focus today on three different test types, all right? Um, the Holy Spirit led me to talk about these. There are a multitude of testing, okay? I want you guys to know that this is not all of them, but this is what we're focusing on today. So we have the test of promotion. You undergo a period of testing to determine your readiness for a next level promotion. Are you ready for the job? Are you ready for the marriage? Are you ready for the child? Are you ready to uh, change locations? Are you ready for this next level that the Lord desires to put you in, but has to make sure first you're ready for it? And then there's the test of faithfulness. This is when you undergo a period of testing to determine the stability of your faith in God. When I say stability, is your faith in God or in the thing? When you don't see the thing, when nothing is happening, where is your faith? Is your faith in what you see or is your faith in him? Amen. And so that's the test of faithfulness. And then we have the test of prophecy. All right. So the word spoken over your life brings about a series of tests to determine fulfillment. So to people who are watching the replay and people who are here currently, this is why you should not be so thirsty to receive a prophetic word. I learned this and I said, God, look, <laughs> because the more prophecies you receive, the more it goes into your spirit, et cetera, those are tests that are lined up for you. The word has to test you in order for it to become yours. And we're going to talk about that, where the truth is biblically that nothing that isn't tested is not yours. Amen. And so um, the test of prophecy. And so every test of God happens by fire. You cannot be tested by God and not go through the fire. Sun rain. How can you say that? Well, the test, so if the test of God comes to, with Job 23 and 10, it said it comes to reveal your heart and motives, to refine you and make you pure. Now, if that is the purpose of the test, then, all right, it's speaking about purification. Well, we know that the fire of God is a purifier. I love this version of this scripture in the Passion Translation. It says, Proverbs 17 and 3, in the same way that gold and silver are refined by fire, the Lord purifies your heart by the what? The tests and trials of life. So this right here tells us a test, a trial equals fire. Y'all got it? Can y'all say it with me? A test, 
a trial equals fuego. I'm, I'm waiting on some people. Fuego. Wait, one more time. Say it again. Fuego. 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 Y'all, look, y'all are being disobedient. I said, say the test in the trial equals fuego. Fuego. <laughs> the test and the trial equals fuego. Fuego. Fuego, baby, fire. <laughs> Amen. Light it up. <laughs> Y'all are lit up. I love it. It's on fire tonight. And so thus when God tests you, expect to encounter his fire. Amen. Thus when you go through a trial, expect to encounter his fire. And so we're going to go through the uh, three different tests. I, I know y'all didn't think I was just going to leave y'all in the air. Let's go through it. So every test that we look at today is going to have a subject. So the subject is the person or people that are tested, amen? And then the observation focus is from God's perspective, what is he looking to see? Because in the different tests, there's many things that can happen, but what's the main focus? Anything else is, is uh, what they call it, is icing on the cake, but what's the focus? And then the desired result, right? What's the purpose of the test? Conditions. What environment did the Lord place these people in to test them? Or what was the condition of their test? Like, what was it that the Lord uh, did or had them do? And then we know the Lord does not test you without a reward. I've learned this. He does not test you without bringing forth a reward. The testing may be long. You might grow weary in it. But when you complete the testing, just like how you receive a grade, just like how uh, when you would get good grades in school, you will receive like a little, um, like a star or like candy, blah, 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 right? There's a reward, all right? So those are gonna be the one, two, three, four, five focus points of the three different tests that we look at, okay? And so test of faithfulness, the subject, Abraham, all right? So what was the observation focus? His heart posture and his faith in God. Remember, every test you see today will have heart posture as a part of the observation focus, okay? Because every test of the Lord reveals your heart before him, all right? And then desired result. The, God desired, okay, if I test Abraham's faith, I want him to obey my command and show that he trusts me. And so what were the conditions? Genesis 22 and 2, the Lord told Abraham, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac. It's so funny because God is like, I don't want you to confuse what I'm talking about. Not just take your son, but your only son, the one that you love, and let me drop the name just in case you get confused. All right. And go to the region of Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain. I will show you. So that's the conditions. That's that's the heavy test, right? You pray for this son. This is the promised son. And now the Lord is telling you to sacrifice it. You pray to be married. You pray to have somebody in your life. And God is telling you to sacrifice it. You pray for this home. And the Lord is telling you to sacrifice it. That is fuego. Okay. All right. And so what was the reward though? We, we know how it ended up. For people that don't know how it ended up, he ended up going to sacrifice his son and then um, he sacrificed his son in his heart. So the Lord saw that, right? And so that was when the angel came and said, hey, there's a ram in the bush. And because you were obedient, not only did you receive provision to still do a sacrifice before the Lord. So this was the moment at which the altar of Jehovah Jireh was created. Oh, amen. So now Abraham would never have to worry about provision because this altar of provision vision was erected before the Lord. And so this was new revelation of God, right? This is a new revelation he carried. So now he knows God as Jehovah Jireh. So when you carry a revelation of God, that you're able to call on certain aspects of God in certain situations because you've encountered that version of him. There's an altar that was erected. Uh, there was an altar that was erected before him concerning that um, encounter. Prayerfully, that makes sense. And so the other reward was he was greatly blessed. And it says that he shall have multiplied seeds. 
all right, a multiplied seed. So this will be as far as the sky and the stars and the da da da, right? I'll remember that. All right, so that's the first test, test of faithfulness. So the test of promotion. Who were our subjects? I would have put the uh their like Mishael, like their actual Hebrew names, but we're just gonna go with what everybody knows. Shadrach, Meshach, <laughs> and Abednego. All right. So what was the observation focus? Remember, every test has the heart posture, but the Lord was seeing worship stands. Who would you worship, right? So God desired for them to follow his commandment, which says you will not have any other God before me. You will not worship statues and um, gold and bronze idols, right? And so that was the desired result. So what were the conditions? Um, if you want to see the conditions, you can find that in Daniel 3, 4 through 6 and 19. So what the king said, he said, you must worship my gold image or be cast into a burning fiery furnace. For people that don't know the story, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they pretty much said, first of all, our Lord going to save us. But even if he don't save us, I'm still not bowing down to your, to your uh, statue. And so what the king did was he made the furnace seven times hotter. Seven, y'all know that's the number of perfection and completion, amen. And so he says seven times hotter, not knowing that he was only creating the perfect conditions for the Lord to promote them. So the Lord was already planning to promote them, but because he made it seven times hotter, not five, not six, not three, not two, but seven times hotter, it was the perfect condition for perfection. And when the Lord says that you have gone through a period of perfecting and you, your process is complete, you are prepared, more than prepared for the next level, for the next assignment that he's calling you into. And so what was their reward? Promotion in the province of Babylon. Amen. All right, so our last test, the test of prophecy. We have our homie Joseph, okay? So heart posture, right? And this is going to affect a lot of you guys. So I want you to listen. The other observation focus was, would he stand on God's word in the midst of trials? I forgot what scripture I was reading, but I was reading it earlier and it said, the, 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 the tree and the grass may wither, but the word of the Lord will stand always. So when the word, when the Lord gives you a word, there's even a scripture in Proverbs where it says that whatever comes from the mouth of the king is a law. And if y'all know anything about laws, laws, y'all y'all can try and break the laws, but there's a punishment, right? <laughs> and so what that tells us is that when the word of the Lord comes forth, there's also another scripture the Holy Spirit reminded me of where it says that the word of Lord, the word of the Lord is like iron that has gone through the fire seven times over to be purified is so pure it's so pure I don't know if that's Proverbs or Psalms but one of the two I think it's Psalms it's in Psalms 10 actually and so anywho the point is this the word of the Lord is so pure his word will never return back void right and so what was God's desired result so if we look at Psalm 105 and 17 the Lord, it says that the Lord sent Joseph ahead. The Lord sent Joseph ahead. Some of you do not understand that the Lord, the trials you're going through, what it is you're going through, the Lord is sending you ahead to be a deliverer. The Lord is sending you ahead to be a sustainer. The Lord is sending you ahead to be a kingdom financier. So you have to go through a certain process. And so the Lord had to send Joseph ahead. And what that looked like was sending him into the very land of captivity that the Lord would uh, as his son Manasseh says, the Lord, no, not uh, Manasseh, but um, Ephraim, the Lord has made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. The Lord will send you into a place. Yes, it will afflict you, but in that very place is where the Lord will make you fruitful. It's the very place where the Lord will elevate you. Amen. He sent him ahead. So he sent him into Egypt before the famine even started because why? He, he was giving him along the way. Yes, we know about him being sold as a slave and all this other stuff, but he was 
immersed in their culture. He became wise concerning what it was, was going on. Some of you, the Lord threw you into a work environment, but you don't know what's up ahead. The Lord sent you ahead of time. So you don't know what's up ahead, but the father knows. And so while you're there, you're, you're speaking to the managers. You're learning about the, those, the systems. The, the Holy Spirit is giving you different strategies to come in and to, to change things up, to shift things up a bit. So when the Lord sends you into a foreign place, you should be like, okay, Lord, what lessons am I learning here? What preparation am I gaining here? Yeah, it might get hot, but I know that whatever you're giving me, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, it's going to be pure. And blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see the Lord, amen. And so when we look at the conditions, it says Genesis 37, 39 to 41, right? So we know his conditions. He was sold as a slave. He encountered false accusations, false imprisonment, and being forgotten. And there's other tests that he went through too. There's about seven different tests that Joseph went through. So when we when we really study the story of Joseph, you see how the word of prophecy that the Lord has given you, how it tests you. You Some of y'all have gone through a test of betrayal. Some of y'all have gone through a test of slander where people have talked talk bad about you up and down side left right all types of ways amen like they don't talk about you so much you don't even know what to say about yourself okay and so it's a test you have to go through a test because if the lord is bringing you to a position such as a prime minister do you not think everybody has an opinion about all the music artists everybody has a, a, an opinion about the pastors everybody has an opinion about this right and so the Lord has to prepare you. The purpose of the fire, which I don't have in my notes, is the preparation, preparing you for where you're going. Remember the promotional fire of God. It purifies you to prepare you for something always. And so what was the reward? The prime minister of Egypt, and then also he was able, I didn't put this on here, but he was able to save the people from a famine, right? And then he had his sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Manasseh was the son where he said, you have made me to forget the toil of my father's house. I know I want that to be my testimony, that Lord, you have made me to forget all the B stuff that I went through. <laughs> and then Ephraim, right? When we look at Ephraim, Ephraim, this was the one where it says, you have made me fruitful in my land and affliction. Some of you, the Lord has sent you somewhere and it is afflicting you greatly. But I prophesy over you tonight that the Lord is going to give you, give birth to an Ephraim in you, whether it's a physical child or whether it's something that he births through you in the spirit. But he Amen. in your land of affliction. Amen. I receive. All right. So. Love you, Sean Ray. Woo! <laughs> I love y'all too. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. And so let's test your understanding. See what I did there? So for the next 10 minutes, you are a scientist and you have been given one simple assignment. Test your subject. So for the people who are here, you need to figure out who's your subject. What is your observation focus? What is your desired result? What are the conditions? And what is the result? Uh, what is the reward? So you guys have... 10 minutes to do this if you finish um raise your hand because um time is ticking so i would like to get past the last few slides so i'm actually going to cut it down to five if you guys um still need more time you can continue to work on it and we'll talk about it in the discussion half after but you have five minutes <laughs> to test is this about ourselves or a bible character you are a scientist and you have been given one simple assignment. Test your subject. That's such a teacher's response. You go, to, you go to the professor's office and they're like, wait, what? Test your subject. That's all I can say. That it's the teacher in me coming out. So I ain't got nothing to say, y'all.
Sunray is so beautiful. Huh? Sunray is so beautiful. Oh, thank you. All right, y'all, so five minutes. All right, all right, all right. Some of y'all might still be working, but I see my cousin, Telvis, raised his hand. Hey, cousin. How you doing? Good, how are you? How are you? I'm doing good. All right, we ready to hear it. We ready to hear it. All right, all right. Um, my subject was Gideon. Mm. And the observation focus was um, faith in God was little to nothing and believing he still would make a way. Uh, the conditions were warfare, going against the grain, the norm, and family. Being obedient to God without caring what others thought. The reward was victory. And he delivered the Israelites from, the, from Midian. And he had the choice to reign over the Israelites. So he had the choice to, to be king over them and even though he didn't take that choice, he was like, um, me or my family won't won't um uh, be a judge over y'all. And my conditions were going against the grain with his family and everything because the first thing before he fought, the Midianites God told him to get rid of the idols that his family had and everything. So it's just the true test of going in the strength that you have, like God told him. And just, just believing that God will fulfill the other side that you think you're not good enough for. Just believe in God that he will just fulfill everything else. And you just go how you are. That's really good, Sophie. That's really good, Sophie.
One more time. What was your what observation was focus? focus? And then what is your desire? You say repeat that? Yeah, the observation focus and desired result. Um, the observation focus was was faith in God with little to nothing and believing he would still make a way. And then and, uh, uh the desired result was um oh well, I put reward. Hmm. Oh, I might have skipped desired result. <laughs> I think you um, you mix the observation focus and the desired result because you read your observation focus one more time. Uh, faith in God with little to nothing and believing He would still make a way. Yeah, so I think your is your you said faith in God and believing that He will make a way, and so yeah, I feel like that's your desired result. So, what exactly were you focused on, or what exactly was God focused on when He tested Gideon? Um, besides showing God. showing his strength when he didn't think he was strong, mm. showing his uh, uh his identity, his true identity. Because when when God first called Gideon, he said, um, he called him faith. He called him a strong warrior. I think yeah. even when Gideon thought he was weak. Yes, that's good. Tubbs, you quick on your toes. That's good. <laughs> I so got ten of. <laughs> <laughs> now you got 12 no I'm just kidding really good <laughs> anybody else uh, want to reply yeah, that was really good um, I talked about Ruth okay okay so Ruth was the subject Um, the observation focus was I guess you would say heart posture and purity. Mm. Okay. I'm not really sure about the purity, but I just put that for now. The desired result is faith in God. And the conditions were faithfulness and patience. And the reward was a godly marriage. That's good, but I want to challenge you. So yes, I need to be challenged. <laughs> the conditions you said faithfulness and something else. Faithfulness and purity, because I know she was alongside her mother-in-law. I'm not really sure her name. Um. Okay. And she was tested, you know, because her mother-in-law told her to leave because her son and husband had, you know, passed away. So God tested her to see if she was going to stick around when she didn't have to. Okay. But I want to stretch you a little further. So what are, what were the conditions that Ruth had to encounter? Because I know you mentioned for the conditions, faithfulness and something else, but how did God, what, what environment did he throw Ruth into? What situation was she in? Being a, being a servant, I guess. Okay. Being a servant. And then if you look at her posture in society, was she Bill Gates or was no, she? No, she was a lowly woman working for a field. Yeah. Working in the field. And then what else? What else did Ruth go through? Like, what was she still carrying inside? What pain? Her identity, like not knowing her identity. And remember her husband passed away and she didn't give birth to a child. Thank you guys in the chat. She was a widow. Yes. And then like Sierra said, it's grief. So really good. Really good, Naya. I thank you so much. That was really good. I thank you for sharing. And I think too, just spiritually, the Lord is also saying that you need to stretch, go deeper. Okay. Um, not just with this exercise, but in your relationship with him, he's calling you to go deeper. Look, that's your confirmation. He's calling you to go deeper. Amen. And mm -hmm. so um, we have Daria. And then test. And then after that, y'all, we got to stop because uh, we still got some slides to go through. 
So Tiana, hold yours until after the live finish. So we got Daria. Hi everyone, good evening. Um, so <clears throat> my favorite person in the Bible that I had to do is Daniel. Um, it's my, uh, I know that people say David is a man after God's own heart, but when you think about Daniel, when you run the stats, Daniel much more so. That's just my personal opinion. It's okay though. Um, so, okay. Um, so it says, who is your subject? So my subject is Daniel. The observation focus is for him to trust in the Lord and to continue to be faithful. Oh, wait observation focus is to trust in the lord when the kingdom is a wait so the observation focus is what what the lord is looking at him for mm -hmm. okay the lord is looking at him to try and um have him trust in him regardless of because the the people everyone in the kingdom was against him and the king made a decree against him praying to the lord so and i guess like also being faithful to the lord in the midst of trial and continuing to pray three times a day regardless of what the other um regardless of what law or anything is decreed because he and and that's good because he was a person thank you holy spirit he was a person who also honored the law so it's breaking the law to be obedient to the lord mm -hmm. and what the lord calls us to do and his desired res uh the desired result was faithfulness to the lord in the midst of trials um and then the conditions were continuing to pray to the lord three times a day even though the king said that um, it was banned throughout the kingdom. And then the reward was obviously being taken out of the lion's den. Um, and then also, I believe, reassuming his position as second in command. And um, also, I believe that King Darius also, he appoints, he said that anyone who said that, who doesn't believe in the God, uh, Daniel's God, is thrown into the lion's den. I, I believe that's a reward because it's like you should encourage people to pursue the Lord. That's just... And then one more thing, you mentioned it in the reward part that he was delivered from it, but I just want you, since we're on YouTube, what was the other condition of his test? So you mentioned like how this law went out. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. Saying, yeah, let's talk about that. So what, yeah. what were the other conditions that Daniel had to go through. So you mentioned it in the reward, but I just want to hear you mention it. So like for the people on YouTube to know, like the environment that the Lord threw him into. <laughs> so what had happened was Daniel was appointed first and foremost, he had a dream or he had to interpret a dream from, from, um, I believe it's King Darius at the time. He had to interpret a dream. Was it Darius or Nebuchadnezzar? It was Nebuchadnezzar. So he had to interpret a dream from Nebuchadnezzar. And then Nebuchadnezzar lost his position because he was being prideful and unfaithful to the Lord. So then Darius, the king of the Medes, I believe, he was the one who took over and became king. And then King Darius um, said that he had to, um, he, he was like, um, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm blinking right now he um, oh my God, this is pressure this is fire this is it, it, it is but the lord the, he refined by fire so okay. holy spirit please help me um so it was like the three wise men were like the only way that we can they were jealous of daniel let's go holy spirit thank you he they were jealous of daniel because of his faithfulness to the lord and because he was such a lawful and honorable man so then they were like the only way that we can get the um daniel to fall is if we do something or plan something manipulative deceitful regarding his god and so that's when they came up with the idea of you cannot pray to any other god because king darius is not a god that's why i went like this mm -hmm. any other god again uh, other than king darius and then they had him do the king's seal. And if they said, if you do have, um, do pray to another God, you will be thrown into the lion's den immediately. So, um, and it had the king's seal. So the king, because the king favored Daniel. So that's another thing too. When you, ha when you have favor with God, God will also give you favor with those who are in power. Um, and also, so that was what happened. And then though, um, 
the men in power, they caught Daniel praying. And then they said he will be thrown into the lion's den. And King Darius said, may your God protect you as you're in the lion's den. And then um, oh, that's Daniel. Good. That's good. Oh. You got it. Yes. Oh. You, you spoke on what I wanted you to speak on, which was the conditions was he was around a whole lot of jealous people. Sometimes yeah. people put you in a place <laughs> and people just don't like you because you have a spirit of excellence. Why is she always on time? Why is she always telling us this part? Why is she always got to be like this? And it's the spirit of excellence that's within you. But the very agitation that they have towards you is the thing that the Lord will use to promote you. So very, very, very good job. Thank you. You did amazing. So we have one last person. And then anybody else that wants to speak, y'all just hold it until after. All right. Because we still got a few slides to get through. So Tiana. Or did I say Tiana go after? It was somebody else that had their hand raised before Tiana. Tiana, I said It was. Something. You told me to go after. Okay, bet. All right, y'all. Well, we'll just continue and go into the because I um, yeah. Okay, well, Tess, we'll just do you after. So it'll be Tess, Tiana, and then somebody named Sylvie. So we got Tess, Tiana, and Sylvie. Can somebody put that in the chat so that we know what order we're going in when we get off the live so nobody is uh, pushed to the side? We have Tess, Tiana, and then Sylvie. All right, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. You guys did such a good job. So uh, what I want to mention here is, see, look. I just had you create the perfect test conditions. And by y'all participating, all of y'all was a part of my test. Y'all see what I did there? I tested y'all as I was telling y'all to test your under. <laughs> okay, so who was the subject? You, the observation focus. Are you paying attention in Bible study or are you just coming to Bible study because you just want to be here, want to be a lump on a log, amen? And so I wanted you guys to apply what you were just learning, okay? To see, are you really paying attention? And also, is the word of the Lord penetrating you? Are you receiving revelation as you're listening? So my desired result was that you will be able to create the perfect testing conditions, all right? And what were the conditions? So my main condition was, when I was doing this, I'm like, oh, I should probably give them a subject in this. I, I, can, I can see your mindset, right? by minimalizing how many conditions I have so I can see your creativity. I noticed that you all use scripture. None, I mean, use people in the Bible. None of you use yourselves. None of you use people around you. So I will uh, challenge you guys uh, after Bible study, when you're in your personal time, to apply this to you, to apply this to a friend, to apply this to, I don't know, somebody on a TV show. Go beyond the Bible. <laughs> Because I can I just say really quickly, I actually used myself, but I after too. everyone had went, I thought that I was wrong. So I was like, you know, Me I'm too. about to say nothing, Me too. but I used myself, and everybody's <laughs> coming on here talking about scripture, Lord, failed. <laughs> Me too. Well, I'm glad that you too. Know. But yeah, it was no wrong answer. But even with that, that right there reveals something in y'all, because just because people answer something, y'all answer is still valid, right? So be strong in your conviction and what it is that you were led to do. So remember, testing reveals our heart posture, no matter what it is that's in it. And then, um, so conditions, minimalize to enhance creativity, 10 minute prep, we have to cut it into five minutes. And so what was the reward? So whatever you learned today, when someone comes to you and they're crying and they're in a frustrated situation, you sit and you think back as a scientist and you're like, hmm. God, what are you doing here? They're the subject, but what is your focus? Because when you do that, you're able to guide them through scripture. You may even sit there and listen to their thing. And you're like, girl, you are rude. The Lord has literally made you rude. You need to go read Ruth and follow her blueprint. Oh no, you are a Joseph. You was falsely in prison. People been lying on you. With Joseph, it was test after test after test after test after test after test, amen, even with David, but it was because they had great cause on their life, amen, and so with that, you're able to apply your understanding from today to um, the people around you and even to your own life. So next, tested. So remember, at the beginning, I gave you guys the definition of test, and so now we're going to focus on tested. So Isaiah 48 and 10 says, 
See, I have refined you. Though not as silver, I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. So when we look at the interlinear text, at the phrase, I have refined you, it comes from this Hebrew word in Strong's Concordance number 6884. So it means to smelt, to refine, to test, or try. And so when we look at the next one, the phrase, I have tested you in the interlinear text, in Strong's, the, the word ends up lining up to Strong's number 977. So it means to be selected and chosen. Hmm. So tested means that God has chosen you. Tested means that what God has tested you concerning is yours. So when the Lord tests you concerning that business, when the Lord tests you concerning that marriage, when the Lord tests you concerning that ministry, you can say that it is yours because you have been tested, which means I have been chosen for this. It's different between going through the testing and being tested. Tested is past tense. And also tested guarantees the presence of God's glory is with you. God's presence is on what he has tested. I'm going to say that again. God's presence is on, God's presence is with what he has tested. God is with all of us. But as I mentioned in the live yesterday, it's a difference when God is with you and when God is with you. We're going to talk about it. So tested equals God's presence. So David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these for I have not tested them. So David took them off. This is 1 Samuel 17, 39. So this is where David hears the Philistine talking out loud crazy in um, 1 Samuel 17, Goliath. And he's like, oh, I'm gonna fight him, right? And so when Saul hears that this young man is inquiring, he's like, oh, let me give him my armor. Anything not tested isn't yours. It says it right here. He says, he put on Saul's armor and he said, I can't wear these. I haven't tested these. So Saul's gear didn't belong to David. It wasn't a part of his process. So how many of you are picking up things that aren't yours, that was not a part of your process, that the Lord did not test you with, and now you're walking around counterfeiting, losing the battle, feeling super heavy because you have on somebody else's armor. You didn't test it, so it's not yours. So why do you have it on? Why are you going into a battle with the Lord did not prepare you with? I don't care if the Lord told you, you are my scribe and you've only been in the, in the fire with the pen. You better show up to the battle with the pen and know that the presence of the Lord is on what has been tested. How can I say that? When we look at David, it says, then he took his staff in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag in a pouch which he had and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. What I think is so interesting from the time I was a youth to even adulthood, I always hear about the slings and I mean the sling, the slingshot and the five stones. But we got to pay attention here. He had the staff and the shepherd's bag with him when he went into battle against Goliath. So what was a part of David's process? It wasn't those stones. It wasn't the sling stone. It was the staff and the shepherd's bag. It was a part of his process. So remember, the conditions of the test, what was David tested as? The Lord made him a shepherd to test him to see if he would be prepared to become a king, right? That was his process. So remember what I said before, whatever has been tested carries God's presence. So it was about the presence of God, the encounters of God that he had while he was a shepherd, which is why the staff and the bag was a part of it. And I said this in my own knowledge. I believe that if David went to battle without his shepherd's staff, he would have lost it because the presence of the Lord was on that what was tested. Yes, the Lord tested him, but it was the Lord always sends you into the fire with something. 
It's a part of your process, whether it's your singing voice, whether it's your ability to write, whether it's your ability to do hair, whatever it is, there's something that you are actively doing as you're going through the fire. So people be screaming and shouting for God to move, but they ain't been tested. So they have no power. What do I mean by that? Look at Jesus. He went into the wilderness for 40 days and it said what? He came out of the wilderness with the fullness of the power of the Holy Ghost. He came out with the fullness of the power and it only came after the testing. Moses, a 40 year trial period as a shepherd, he was called by the Lord and the Lord said, he said, God, how can I tell these people that you sent me? The Lord said to him, what is in your hand? What is in your hand will show them that I am with you. He didn't say, oh, just because I'm with you. He said, no, what I put in your hand will prove that I am with you. The singing gift that I gave you will prove that I'm with you. When you sing, the room will shake. Anointing, the anointing from heaven will fall down and yokes will break. When it comes to your, your ability to cut hair, oh, they're going to know, whoa, I left and yeah, I got a haircut, but why do I suddenly feel clearer? Uh, the depression, the demons that were tormenting me, it left me. What is it that the Lord has sent you into the fire with? Some of you have have hands that have been graced for hair so when people just leave you they're like girl my hair is cute but I don't know what it is I just feel like I stepped into another realm of God's glory the Lord puts his presence on things that has been tested so what has the Lord been processing in you that his presence is now on so that when you write, people feel his presence. When you sing, people feel his presence because we know that the Lord is with you. That's what he says. But how do we really know the Lord sent you? Because his presence will show up in what it was that he had tested you through. So key takeaways. God tests us to reveal the motives of our hearts to us. Life circumstances are used by God as ideal testing conditions. Anything not tested does not belong to you, all right? Prophetic words will test you. So please don't be so thirsty for a prophetic word because you're just asking for another test, amen? To be tested means his presence is with you. And to be tested is to be chosen, amen? So, if you are led to sow into this uh, teaching today or to sow into this ministry, I'm putting this information here. I'm going to leave this up for about a minute and then um, I'm going to come on for everybody that's here for the in-person session. But YouTube, I'm so grateful that you joined me today. And anybody that does sow a seed, put the fire emoji next to it, okay? Um, I know Zell is up there, but I wouldn't recommend doing Zell right now. Um, just cash up and PayPal, but whatever you do, put the fire emoji. So I know where the seed is coming from. So when I pray over it, I'm praying over your process, being in the fire, amen. Or just that the Lord rewards you for the fire that you have gone through. So I love you all so much, YouTube. I'll talk to you later.